Let's open our Bibles this morning to John chapter 3. If you're visiting with us, the Lord instructed us to open our lessons, each lesson, with this scripture verse, John chapter 3 and verse 16. And I'm going to read verse 16, 17, and 18, and I'd invite you to read along. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and it'll change you line upon line. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hallelujah. I'd invite you to turn over to Psalm chapter 34 today. I'm going to look at a few verses. And I'm going to spend a few lessons, um, not sure how long, but we'll go as long as the Lord leads. But I want to spend some time looking at praise and thanksgiving and a life of praise and the effect thereof. And uh, I believe it'll bless you. It will change your life and the atmosphere where you are in your life, in your home. When you get there, let's read Psalm 34 together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Yes, yes, delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I like, uh, there's a few translations that I like. This is the Good News translation, which is a modern translation. It says, I will always thank the Lord. I will never stop praising him. I will praise him for what he has done. May all who are oppressed Listen and be glad. Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us praise his name together. The New International Version says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Now, let's let's go back to the King James Version here. It says, his praise shall continually. What does continually mean? All the time. And somebody may say, well, how, how can you do that? 
How, you, how can you praise the Lord all the time? I got to go to work. I got to tend to this and do this. How am I going to praise the Lord all the time? Well, let me ask you a question. If the Lord put it in his word, do you think he uh, put something in there that we can't do? No. Now, it's just that we make a choice not to do it. But I can tell you this, that your praise and thanksgiving and worship affects your environment and your home. And praise and worship, um, let me just, let me read some scriptures. You don't have to turn there. Listen to this, Psalm 22. You can write these down or get the tape. Psalm 22, verse 3. It says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. When we praise him, he inhabits those praises. Hallelujah. So as we praise him, his presence is manifested. So therefore, where you praise him, where you lift up his name and bless him, his presence is manifested. Well, one thing about that, his peace is his manifested presence. So that's a whole lot better than having grumbling and complaining and griping because what you're doing is you're opening up doubt and strife and that's the other person who's defeated, Satan. That's his manifested presence, is strife. And so what we want is we want to lift up praises and magnify the Lord. Amen. How do we do that? Well, I think one of the things, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but one of the things that we were sharing on Wednesday from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 30, I'll read it to you. It says, on the New International, it says, if I take part in the meal with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of something I thank God for? Let me read it in the, the King James. It says, for if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? So we can see here there is a connection between thanksgiving and praise and God's grace. The more you thank him and bless him and praise him, you increase your capacity to receive grace, his grace. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm jumping, I'm, 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 I'm getting a sense here to jump here a little bit. Uh, turn over to Hebrews chapter 11, just for a second. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. You know, I shared this Wednesday night. No matter how good it is in your life, people can find something negative to complain about. No matter how good it is in somebody's life, they can find something to complain about. And no matter how bad it is in your life, you can find something good to thank God for. Amen. If you had nothing to thank him for that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and you've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and that healing and provision has been afforded you and you are blessed and highly favored, then that's enough. But there's more. So we can thank him and bless him all the day, continually, for what he sent his son here to fulfill. So did you get to Hebrews 11.1? 1? What does Hebrews 11.1 1 say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Well, we spent some lessons speaking on faith 
but faith is the confidence of what you expect. It's also the evidence of things not seen. So faith gives thanks and praise for that which is not seen. We can thank God for things that we don't have yet. We thank him and bless him for prosperity. You may not have it yet, but you give him thanks. So faith is confidence of something that God promised and will bring to pass. So I can give him thanks, and I can do that all the day. Thank you, Lord, for meeting my needs. Thank you, Lord, that I don't know how to do this job, but I thank you for the wisdom and revelation on how to do it. And you increase the grace and the anointing and the power to do it. But if you're going to sit there and complain and talk negative, you're giving license to your enemy to cloud your thinking and your understanding. But when we thank God, we give him license to begin to move in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the peace of God and the joy of God will surround us and infect our environment and the people around us. And one of the things that I shared in the last lesson, I'll share this, that your confidence, your faith in him and your victories can affect others. Your faith victories can affect generations to come. And so can your praise and your thanksgiving. It can affect generations. Well, you say, well, how is that? How many had mamas and fathers that had us hymn in their heart and sang and you heard them singing and you still remember it? It affected you. That's what I'm talking about that they had a song in their heart. They had a praise on their lips in front of their children. Not talking about the negative of the day. I don't know what we're going to do, that crummy old boss, or they weren't talking about husband and wives negative. They were singing a song. That's what I'm talking about. And God increased the grace upon their lives to do what? To go through. He made a way where there was no way. Hallelujah. Amen, right? Amen. That's right. Amen. He made a way. So God inhabits the praises of his people. And that means he manifests himself in our praise. So it's important that as we go through the day, we keep thanksgiving and praise on our lips and in our heart, and it keeps our heart sensitive and in tune with heaven, not worrying about the circumstances and wondering about them. How am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? He is going to walk us through. Hallelujah. I'll read another psalm. Psalm 92, 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Hallelujah. I like the New International. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. So we're to make music. So as we praise God in our car, in our homes, and on our job, the peace of God will increase in our homes, in our job, in our settings. We need to keep praise and a heart full of praise. Hallelujah. Let me read a few more. Psalm, uh, Romans 15, Now the God of peace will be with you all. Amen. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. How does the peace of God increase? It increases by keeping a psalm, keeping a hymn in your lips, and the peace of God will keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. 
Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. So we're to do what? Let the peace of God rule in our heart. How do we do that? How do you let the peace of God rule? You don't think on the circumstances. You give God praise. You give him a song. You thank him for what you don't have. You have victory. You've been delivered. Your body's healed. You thank him. And let me ask a question. When his presence is manifested, sickness has got to go. It's got to go. But you can't be worrying and going on the internet, looking up every symptom and meditating about it. Hello. And wondering how we're going to make ends meet. I'll tell you, you know, my parents wrote, wrote a letter. My mother and father are both about, my mother's 87, my father's 86. But they were sharing something in a little Christmas note. They said, you know, when we lived in this, uh, when we lived in Suffern, <clears throat> when they first moved, uh, we moved uh, uh, from another area. And they said, you know, we had seven children. They did not have enough money to, to see through getting presents and food and all of that, and they just trusted God. And they said just out of the clear blue, pre people gave, you know, clothes and various things that could be gifted to the children. We didn't know the difference. And money and food, and they thanked God. But that's what I'm saying. They didn't sit there and we never, oh, I'll share this with you. I never once, ever, read my lips, ever, never heard my parents fight in front of the children, ever. I never knew what it was like. I never heard a cross word between my parents with one another. Now, they may have done that behind closed doors. They never did it in front of the children. So we never heard fighting and bickering in our home, ever. And I can tell you it has an effect. Now, I'm not saying that if you grew up in that, I'm just telling you that I didn't and I had an effect upon me. So I will say that we need to have, we can have, I made this point, we can have greater manifestations of the presence of God as we praise him more. We can have, we can have. See, some of us are waiting, Lord, I want more of your presence. And he's saying, I want more of your praise. I'm waiting on you. No, we're the ones that have to praise him more. We're the ones that have to bless his name from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will grumble. No, I will, I will grumble. No, I will rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You know, the, as I was meditating on this this morning, turn over here a second to Exodus. This, this, this account just kind of bubbled up before I came out. I was thinking about this. And the Lord said, it was reminding me, Exodus 14. Exodus 14. And this is the account of the Israelites going across the Red Sea. A problem. They've got the Egyptians on their tail end. And they go across on dry ground, right? And you, you know the whole account. But look at verse 30. Thus the Lord, Exodus 14, verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. Glory to God. No different today. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. 
And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared God and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Don't tell me that you can't have an effect on future generations, but look at the next chapter and look at verse 1. Then sang... Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Hallelujah. You need to have a praise and a thanksgiving for every deliverance. And thank God when you walking through the next one, you say, thank God, thank you, Father, you deliver me here. I know you're going to deliver me here. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. I bless you and thank you. Hallelujah. If he did it once, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. You know, I, let me share this. I, I saw something on the internet, uh, I think it was Friday, and it really blessed me. Now, he didn't say whether he was a Christian. He was a soldier. He was a Brit. He was a British soldier. And he had been selected to carry the torch for the 2012 Olympian Games in London. And I saw the little clip and I said, man, this blessed me. I got to read this because it just showed from a natural standpoint. He was a British soldier stationed in Iraq and was shot in a firefight in Basra, which had some of the fiercest fighting in that uh, campaign in December 2006. And he shared that a vehicle broke down with six of his men in it, and he was a mechanic, and he was called to get it started. He said it was like a turkey shoot because the car, the truck, or the Humvee was broken down. They got six guys in there, and it's a turkey shoot because now the insurgents know they got a problem. Let's get them. So it's, it's, they're lucky if they get out. And so he said he got the vehicle started, And because of the firefight, there was so much dust they couldn't see. So he stuck his head. Well, you don't want to do that in a firefight, but he had to see. So he stuck his head up, up out of the tank to see where they were and said, go, 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 go. And he was bringing his head down. Bam! He got shot in the head as he was coming down. So he he said he got, he, he, uh, uh, And, of course, he goes into the details. He said his palate in his mouth was collapsed. He couldn't breathe, stuck his finger in there to keep his palate up so he wouldn't suffocate because the bullet had collapsed things. So they got him out of uh, Iraq, and he said 17 days later, he's in a hospital, and they tell him, you lost your left eye, and you've only got 10% vision in your right eye. And it took over 100 operations to even begin to restore his skull and his face and so forth. Very extensive. And he said after that, he went into deep depression, severe depression because of that. An oh, woe was me party. I lost my eye, my head's messed up, and I only got 10% vision. Oh, what am I going to do? This is what he said. He said, news came from the field in Iraq, and his buddies didn't make it. And he said, after the news of his buddies, he said it would be a dishonor to feel sorry for myself when I had been given a second chance. He said it'd be a dishonor to his buddies. I got a second chance, and my buddies didn't. So he began to volunteer with the army and assist newly injured soldiers. He became a trainer. He said, an injury may have changed my life, but he said, I've got so much to live for. 
Yeah, it may have changed your life, but I've got a breath. I can live. I can train. I can assist newly injured soldiers coming in. I've got something to live for. And then he was selected because of that to carry the Olympic torch for the games. And I said, get off your pity party, begin to bless God, begin to praise him and thank him that I've got something to contribute to the body of Christ. No, you may have been given a curveball in 2011. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you had some kind of an infirmity. But begin to bless God and thank him that you've got breath. You've got something to thank him for. And through your praise, his presence will increase and manifest in your life and change your circumstance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here's a question. Let's go to Psalm 113. We'll spend a few minutes here. Psalm 113. God is good. We need to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. You know, the interesting thing is it says that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's not in your mind. That's not in your heart. That's in your lips, in your mouth. Hallelujah. Psalm 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. I like the Message Bible. It says, from the east to west, from dawn to dusk, Keep lifting all your praises to God. Hallelujah. So praise is not optional. It's not based on how I feel. You need to come. You know, sometimes it's, it's uh, um, and I understand this because I was in the choir for many years. And Thursday nights, people come dragging in from the city. They be dragging, hadn't eaten all day. And now you see, maybe some of you don't understand this, but when you sing, it's, it's exercise. You're putting out. You're breathing. You're putting out energy. Now, if you hadn't eaten, you ain't got no energy. <laughs> and so, dear Pastor Clinton, he'd sit there and he'd be some, some of these rehearsals, you know, we'd, he'd be like, what's the matter with you? Can't you remember your parts? And like, uh, uh, no, sir. <laughs> and it was funny because he would get itchy sometimes because folks were tired. They might be off pitch, didn't remember their parts. They're tired, and they're doing the best they can. <laughs> I know, I see some choir members hanging their heads saying, yeah, that were me. <laughs> but Sunday morning, it was a whole different animal. He'd come in, we'd, we'd tune up, and he'd hit the keyboard, and it was like, what happened? Everybody was on pitch. Everybody knew their parts because you had a good night's rest and folks weren't tired. So Thursdays uh, was interesting. So <laughs> entry, anyways, you all thought we were had these marvelous. No, we did. We had marvelous rehearsals, but sometimes folks were tired. Anyways, um, but... We need to give thanks in every circumstance and not for the circumstance. We need to give thanks to God in every circumstance, right in the middle of it. We need to thank him. And thank God for what we have. You know, I'll just take an aside. You know, some are grumbling because of their job. 
you have a job. I wish they did this. I wish I got more money. I don't like my boss. I don't like my coworker. This is da da ba ba. And you're doing what? Murmuring. And not lifting up praises to God and thanking Him for what you do have. And as I was sharing before, as we begin to lift up praises to God and thanksgiving to God, His manifested presence will increase in your life and the peace of God will increase and those people that you were so annoyed at now all of a sudden it's like hey they're not so bad why because the peace of God is ruling in your heart and they're going to be affected by you so it's not so much that they're changing you're changing you're changing And you're looking not at the circumstances, but you're looking to God. You're praising him and thanking him, thanking. Father, I just thank you for these people. Thank you, and I bless you for them. Some of you are complaining about your mates. Ah, they don't do this. You're complaining about what they're not instead of thanking God for them. Oh, I'm, I'm serious. Some of us are complaining they're not this. They don't do this. They act like this. They don't pick up. They do bop, bop. Instead of you, and you know what's, what's a tragedy sometimes is that folks will nitpick and complain about each other, and then when they're gone, then, then it's the, the Sarah Bernhardt. They come out, oh, they were such a good... Uh, I almost, you almost want to say, shut up. <laughs> you were complaining about them like they were a dog. <laughs> Come on. Thank God that you have them. And bless God. And the peace of God will begin to rule in your heart. And those things, you know, what does the Bible talk about? It talks about a meek and quiet spirit. So as we begin to bless God and we get up and thank God in the morning, thank you, Father, for this roof over my head. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my husband or wife. Bless them. Then you change. You change. You know, it's an interesting thing. And I'm certainly not here to validate or to confirm your grumbling. I'm not here to say, yeah, you're right. They're a joker. I'm not here to confirm that. I'm not here to say that they're right or wrong. But what I am here to say is that my sister, my oldest sister, told me this story. And she had natural reasons to complain. So you may have natural reasons to grumble about someone. But somewhere in here, I don't see that. I see here, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Well, my sister grumbled about some things about her husband, and it affected their marriage to the place that both of them had had it. And she got on her knees and began to bless God and thank God and the anointing of God fell upon her and changed her like hot oil. She said it was like hot oil just flowed over her from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. And she said she began to see her husband like God saw her. With the love of God and all of that grumbling and complaining ceased. So who changed? She did. And because she changed, he changed. He began to start going to church with her. He began to be active in the church. He didn't change. She did. She stopped her grumbling, and she began to seek God and stop nitpicking at one another. You don't do this. You don't do that. You're not this. You're not that. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Let the praises of God see because when his peace and his presence is in your heart and stirred, it affects those around you. 
and it affects your friends and your neighbors and everybody that comes into your house, you don't even have to preach to them. They walk in and they'll just sense the presence of God. You didn't even say a thing because you've been releasing praise and worship in your house, not strife and biting and bickering. And that's what I'm talking about, that we, we have the effect. We can begin to change our homes and our children that live in it. Amen. And faith, what do we know? Faith without works, it's not what you know, it's what you do. Faith without works is dead, right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now let's, let's move on. I'm going to move over here a little more, and we'll pick up again on Wednesday as we move on. Let's go to uh, Psalm 119. We've got a few minutes left. Psalm 119, verse 62. Psalm 119, verse 62. Question is, when do I praise the Lord? From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. This here is another verse. At midnight, I will, raise, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back up to Psalm 42. Psalm 42. And we're just highlighting some of the Psalms. Psalm 42. It says, Deep calleth unto deep. Psalm 42, verse 7. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto, my God, unto God my rock, well, we'll skip that verse. I just wanted to highlight that it says here, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. Now let's back up to Job chapter 35. Job chapter 35 and verse 10. Job 35 verse 10. Job 35, verse 10. But none saith, where is God my maker, who giveth songs in the night? How many have woke, woken up or as you're waking up, you get a song in your heart? I have. How many? You raise your hand. Every one of us. You're waking up, we get a song. Who's given that song? The Lord is. He's given us a song in the night. Let's turn forward now to Psalm 149. Psalm 149. And verse 5. Verse 5, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. I like the Amplified. It says, let the saints be joyful in the glory and beauty which God confer confers upon them. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Hallelujah. You know, just as an aside, we know this. I know I'm not saying something that you don't already know, but you are a spirit. So your spirit never sleeps. Your body does, but your spirit never sleeps. So we can be communing with God all night long. That's why when we're waking up, we hear things. The Holy Ghost will speak to us or we'll wake up in the middle of the night with a song or a scripture or something in our heart because our spirit never sleeps. It's eternal. Hallelujah. 
Let's turn uh, to back to Psalm 35. Maybe we'll close with this. Psalm 35. Psalm 35 and verse 27 and 28. Verse 27 and 28, Psalm 35. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise. How long? All the day long. Hallelujah. Let me ask a question. This says, uh, just something to consider. This says here that we're to speak of his righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Let me give you a, a, a scripture of course, we, we know this particular scripture, Joshua 1.8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. How are we going to do that? That we're not going to let the book of the law depart out of our mouth, and we're going to meditate on it day and night. Well, we just got done reading in Psalm 35. It says, and my tongue shall do what? Speak of thy righteousness, which is just exactly what Joshua 1.8 is saying. Speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. And somebody may say, well, how, how can I do that? I can't praise the Lord all day long. Well, let me ask you something. You're thinking on something all day long. <laughs> you're thinking about something all day long meditating on it so I need to just check up what am I thinking about what am I meditating on and is it the Bible is it God's promises or is it negative is it strife is it bickering is it complaining or is it grumbling see you're thinking on something all day long so you can't say, well, how am I going to do that? You're already doing it. <laughs> You're already doing it. Just change it. Just switch gears and say, praise you, Lord. Thank you. I bless you. Thank you. This is a tough spot I'm in, but I'll thank you. You're going to see me through. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Get a song. You know, one of the things that I, I, I don't want to use the word admire, because that's not the right word, but one of the things that I observe about Brother Morris Chapman is that he's always got a song in his heart. He'll get up and get at the piano and begin to bless the Lord and sing praises. Now, you may not, you know, when the Bible says that we're to bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth, uh, everybody doesn't need to be recorded <laughs> or have a mic, but everybody can praise the Lord. Everybody can have a song in their heart. Everybody can give praises to God. Amen? And as we're going along, and, I, and I'll tell you, you know, the word of the Lord this morning was talking about abundance of grace, and I can tell you right now that the abundance of God's anointing and manifested presence is going to come through in an increase of praise and thanksgiving to him. And I can tell you, if you grumble your way through 2012, it won't go well. But we can praise our way through and come to the other side and sing a song just like the children of Israel and bless the Lord and say, thank you, Lord. We walked right on through and all was well. I'm going to finish, and that's it for me. Just You want more? Come on on Wednesday. And if you can't, I'll be here next Sunday. And if you don't want to hear me, go to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know, you know. That's why you go to a restaurant. You have choices. <laughs> I don't know. Well, praise God. Anybody have anything to say? Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Praise God. You have a comment or a question? I don't know how you can have a question about the Psalms. Your heart. And, you know, I was going to share this before that when we come with a song in our heart, when we come stirred, we don't need to get pumped up when we come to service. You know, sometimes people are wanting, I know Pastor Clinton used to say this all the time. He'd say, there is an element of entertainment when we were doing uh, productions. There is an element, but it's not entertainment. There's an element of it, but it is not entertainment. And so one of the things that we need to be uh, careful of is that when we come to church, that we don't come expecting to be entertained. That we come to do what? Bless the Lord and to praise him and thank him for all he's done in my life. And so some folks will say, well, you know, I didn't feel anything. Well, then maybe you didn't come prepared with your heart, stirred with the thanksgiving of God in your heart. And you've been bickering all morning long, change it, fix it. Begin to bless the Lord and praise him and thank him that you got another breath and another day to praise him and serve him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it'll affect your whole home life and this atmosphere here. And I'm not saying that you don't come that way, but as we change, as we begin to stir ourselves up more and more and we come, I'll share this. You notice this. You say, well, I don't know if I understand that. Well, let me give you an example. How many have heard of or are aware of the Benny Hinn meetings? People come. He don't even lay hands on people. It happened with um, um, Amy Simple McPherson, all of them. People came what? Expecting. Not from her or him. They came expecting to receive something from God. And when you come expecting and you come stirred and say, I'm going to get it. I'm coming to get it. God, I'm not going to leave here the way I came. I'm coming to get my healing. I'm coming to get my deliverance. And regardless if anything moves, I'm getting it. See, when that kind of atmosphere is created, you pull on heaven. And heaven manifests itself. And we're all vessels we don't come expecting to do anything other than share the word of God. Pastor Sarah can attest this. You're there minding your own business. And then all of a sudden, the power of God falls on you. To minister, Jesus was the same way. Compassion flowed out of him. He walking down the road minding his own business. And the woman with the issue of blood is grabbing at him. Who touched me? And the disciples say, what do you mean who touched you? compassion she pulled on heaven and we do the same thing with our praises and our thanksgiving the compassion the love and the mercy and the grace of God begins to expand in our lives because we're pulling on heaven with our praises amen praise God 